Welcome to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com, dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. Serving leaders, managers, and people who will be, helping you reach excellence in your work and achieve your personal goals at the same time. Sign up for the free course at clearandopen.com. Look at the cascading effect of wasted time, wasted energy, stress, suffering, businesses closing. And it all comes from one thing. And that is wanting money that you haven't earned. Hi, it's Joseph. Thanks for tuning in to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com. Here in the United States, especially when it comes to our economy, we live in a reality filled with falsehood. Today, we'll look at the relationship between mediocrity and how and why we make stuff up, laying the foundation for our discussion about Descartes, money, meditation, and subjectivism over the next few episodes. If you studied any philosophy in school, you're about to finally use it. Be excited. I offer weekly member webcasts, online courses, and mentorship at clearandopen.com because it's my truth that with the right tools, anyone can eliminate the people, money, and time problems holding them back in business. And I share parts of these webcasts and courses on this show because I want to help you too. If you're enjoying the show and learning from it, I'd love your feedback. If you're listening to the show on an Apple device, all you have to do is open up the podcast app, view the full description of this episode, and click the link to leave a rating and review for the show. Thanks so much for listening. Let's start the show. Well, I have a couple of different topics on my mind today, but one is money. The other I can't remember in this moment, but I'm sure it'll come back to me. And uh, the third one is just asking you, how can I serve you today? Oh, meditation was one of the other ones. Oh, I was going to say money and meditation in the same context would be a lovely topic. Oh, man, that would be a challenge. I kind of, sometimes I wish people would do things like that. Like, can you, can, like I wrote a blog yesterday connecting uh, entitlement in, in millennials or, or difficulty in management in general to uh, Descartes. I think, therefore I am. That'll come out in a few weeks. I thought that was fun. The subject line tentatively is blame Descartes for your management problems. I don't know if my audience knows who Descartes is, but everybody's heard of, I think, therefore I am. But very few people actually know what that means and, and how it started, how it leads, how it actually was the root of the uh, concept of the alternative fact today. Just took a few hundred years to get there, but that's where it came from. But, you know, Descartes probably stole it from uh, Buddhism, been saying perception is reality for 2,000 years prior, but that's what white men do. You know, they steal things and take credit for it. <laughs> Not all white men, but yeah, I wish people would challenge me. Like, could you teach accountability from like a fundamentalist Muslim perspective next Thursday? Like, I wish people would do that kind of stuff. It keeps things interesting. But I could connect money and meditation. Yeah, I've already figured it out. Do you want to hear a crazy money story? This, this is it's a good opener. So, so, so uh, a friend of mine was telling me a guy who's a uh, uh, commercial contractor does. It designs plants and restaurants and stuff on your own Maui. And he's been talking to a guy about creating a uh, brew pub. A couple of people sold a brew pub in, uh, I think it was Montana, no, North Dakota, somewhere around there. Very successful. And they want to retire and come to Maui and start another one. Um, so they've been looking for facilities and all that. And so I learned something that in, uh, that happens apparently in business that I've never known occurs. That a landlord, apparently it's common around here for a landlord who's leasing a commercial space, will not only ask for rent, but take a piece of top line revenue or gross profit. Right, laughable, right? I've never heard of this. Like, so. So the fundamental premise I have about money is that money and value need to move in parallel lines. So the offering of a space is to me intrinsically a fixed cost, right? I'm going to give you this space. You can do whatever you want in it within reason. And if you make a million dollars in it, 
well, that will be what you did. And if you make $100 million, that will be what you did. But it's the same amount of space I'm providing regardless. right? So the, the landlord, on an essential level, is not adding to the, the increasing value of the business. You know, unless there's some trade where it's like, okay, we need these tenant improvements. Okay, well, we can't afford them. I'll take a piece of your gross profit then. That would be a different thing. But the idea that a landlord would take a cut of the gross profits and then the business owner does all the work to increase those gross profits and then the landlord laughs all the way to the bank, this is not illegal, but it is unethical in my opinion. Right. So, but this is where it, that, I mean, that's outrageous. And then this is where it gets really interesting. So, in order to deal with this, it's very common apparently in the state of Hawaii that the, the VC will say to the corrupt landlord, okay, sure, you can have this piece of my gross profit, whatever that is. And then they create a shell corporation. So that, like, say in the brew pub, the uh, purchasing of all the ingredients, is going through, you know, fake shell corporation LLC and then selling all of the ingredients to the actual corporation. So they buy, you know, the barley for, you know, four dollars a pound and then jack the price up from themselves to themselves to whatever price it has to be to zero out the gross profit to turn it into like a nonprofit. So that it shows, you know, one percent profit year after year after year, and cooperating with this is the state of Hawaii, who keeps the wholesale uh, tax rate at half of one percent, which is apparently why that is, because this is so common. Land is scarce here, and, and people are corrupt. And look at all the shan- and then and and so and so this guy was telling me this is like an investment opportunity, possibly. Possibly for this brew pub, and and he said, yeah, that may might be the kind of arrangement we end up in. I said, well, that sounds like the great basis of a lease lessor uh, relationship, right? So they enter into the contract, and then a year later, the uh, the the landlord says, okay, time for you know the audit to happen, so I can take my piece of the gross profit, and and eventually they're going to find out what's been done. And, and now you have this constant tension in the relationship. Who would want to live in such an arrangement? Why can't uh, lessees just negotiate um, a standard lease? Well, certainly some of them try to, but uh, apparently it's common here and there's a lot of like land baron type attitudes and land is scarce. And so it's a, it's a renter's market apparently, but, but certainly they try. But if you know you've got if they have like six people coming at them, they're they're also preying on people who are just uh, financial financially Ill- illiterate and don't get what it really means. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I've heard a few stories of businesses being ruined because of that, where they they just you know typical small business owner they're busy. Okay, sure you want. 20% of the gross profit. Okay, fine. I really need to get this going. And you know, they, or they didn't even read the agreement or you know, who knows. But to me, this is a uh, look at the cascading effect of wasted time, wasted energy, stress, suffering, businesses closing. And it all comes from one thing. And that is wanting money that you haven't earned. And this is what causes the stock market to crash every you know, 20 or 30 years. This is the cause of all financial mischief. The, the, the core reason why someone like an Alan Greenspan says Bitcoin doesn't have any value. Yeah, now Bitcoin is a really interesting idea. Now, alternative currency is a cool idea, especially getting around you know, uh, institutions like the credit card companies who exist based on earning money that they haven't earned or getting money that they haven't earned, right? They get 3% of every transaction, no matter what. Okay, they're providing some convenience. Is that really worth 3% of every single transaction? That, that's definitely debatable. 
And then how about the credit card practices of like where they really incentivize people in every way they can to carry a balance? They're not exactly encouraging people to pay off their credit card debt. And you can just look at the data on that. But the alternative currency, I don't think, is the problem of and to itself. It's when people look at it as an investment and expect the, uh, the value of it to go up for no reason. It's like buying and selling currency. Buying and selling currency to make money, the currency is a symbol. You're not buying bananas and bringing them to a country that has no bananas thereby increasing the value of the bananas and earning a profit. You're just buying something at one time, selling it at another time, and making money. That's to me what the difference is between making money and earning money. I was uh, talking with a friend of mine who has carpentry skills, asking him to do some stuff for me around my house. And he said, well, let's talk about money. And I said, yeah, I want, I want to give you 30 bucks an hour. He said, oh, no, 20 because I'm using your tools. I said, all right, 25. Now that's the kind of conversation you don't hear very often. That's the kind of conversation that happens when two people who have integrity around money talk. Because the default mode for most people is to try to get the absolute most with the minimum amount of effort. Sound familiar? That's mediocrity. That's mediocrity. Which at essence is just a a desire for efficiency. Because everything has truth in it. So mediocrity is based on the notion of efficiency. We all want the most in the most efficient way. Okay. Most output with the least effort. Okay, cool. But when it comes to money, you have to be able to sense the value proposition of it. You know, it it has to it has to be felt in some ways. But also, you know, when you look at something like um, what happened in 2008 with the uh, toxic assets packaged up and sold as healthy assets with the mortgage backed securities scandal. There's a great example. That was not illegal, right? What they did was completely legal. So there's like thousands of people on Wall Street who are constantly looking for some scheme to squeeze two cents out of a penny that isn't illegal. And that was an example of one they found. And then they did it. And then regulators come in and go, okay, well, you can't do this anymore. But they never address the issue. Financial reform would be like, guys, you got to stop trying to squeeze two cents out of every penny. You have to actually earn your money, not just move stuff around and make money with it. And that's why nothing will ever change in the finance system until that contextual issue is addressed, until the emotional, energetic kind of orientation of wanting to make money instead of earning it. How do you regulate that? How do you regulate? Okay, you guys, you can't have money unless you earn it. Okay, well, how do we define that? Can I offer something as part of that? Please. If it wasn't the implicit promise that is still in effect, that if you screw up, the government will bail you out, most of this stuff would go away by by itself. Perhaps. that make make bad decisions were were forced to live with their the the results. Yeah, things would change very radically, pretty quick. Uh, it's probably I think so. That's why I was against the bailouts, even though I certainly enjoy the results of the bailouts. They worked temporarily, anyway. Who knows? But it's like in one way, it doesn't matter because the the bailouts just represented a continuation of the false reality in which we've all been living economically. Which leads me to meditation. See what I did there? (laughs) Thanks for listening to Manage to Engage, the clear and open podcast. Join us next week when you'll be a little bit closer to who you're destined to be. Until then, know that clear and open is dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. If you want to help the show grow, I'd appreciate you leaving a rating and review on iTunes. All you have to do is open the Apple Podcasts app, view the full description of the episode, and click the link to leave a rating and review. Or you can go to clearandopen.com review, and it will bring you to the right place. 
If you're looking for more support on your journey, head over to clearandopen.com for even more tools, articles, and free resources. Thanks so much for listening. Bye for now.